with us. Are the store boy? Let's deal with us. Are you the deliverer? Let's deal with us. I wish I was a step up. And I'm very happy to be here once again. Indeed, during my last visit, which was on Wednesday, 30th September 2020, some three months of the conduct of the 2020 general elections, I commissioned the 60-bed Ahafuano Municipal Hospital, located right here in Tema, Utepa, a project whose construction was spearheaded in 2008 by one of your own, the then DCE, and now Executive Director of NADMO, Eric Nana Ajimai Prempe. <laughs> Tepa was also the location for the launch of the Aquafo Check by the First President of the Fourth Republic, His Excellency the late Jerry John Rawlings, where, and I quote, Coco Clarks were issued with some special checks credited to a general account for Coco farmers known as the Equiafo account in return for Coco beans, unquote. My presence here this afternoon is for equally pleasant reason for the Coco industry, which is the formal opening of this year's Coco season. Indeed, we're gathered here to celebrate the hard work of our cocoa farmers and to stand with the industry in its relentless quest to deliver a sustainable and prosperous economy to us Ghanaians. Ladies and gentlemen, Nananum, the cocoa landscape is witnessing an unprecedented transformation under the government of Nanada Dankwa Akufuada. Beginning with the launch of the Productivity Enhancement Program, Cocoa Board implemented a series of transformational projects that are having a positive impact on productivity, incomes, and climate resilience. This, however, would not have been possible without the hard work and determination of our hard-working cocoa farmers. They have remained the most reliable stakeholders in the entire cocoa value chain. In fact, the first attempt at forming a cocoa marketing board was as a, was a result of the 1937-1938 cocoa holdup. This was a successful protest against a measure that had the potential to limit competition in the marketing of cocoa and could therefore depress domestic prices and lower farmers' incomes from cocoa. The support provided by Dr. J.B. Dankwa, then the Secretary of the Gold Coast and the Shanty Cocoa Farmers Union, the now Furiata the first of the African Shippers Council, and other notable patriots provided further impetus for the protest. In the face of apparent reluctance by the colonial government to heed to the demands of the hard-working farmers and local brokers, cocoa farmers, supported by Dr. Dark and others, persisted with the holdup to the extent of burning their own cocoa beans. This was a significant act of positive defiance, a great sacrifice for the future of the cocoa industry and this country at large. Cocoa farmers forfeited their incomes in order to achieve a desired outcome, a result that was deemed necessary for a sustainable cocoa economy. And I salute today the memory of those gallant cocoa farmers. To address the current challenges of the sector, government has introduced a number of innovative policies aimed on three pillars, resilience, competitiveness, and robustness. Prior to 2017, the CODAPEC and high-tech programs introduced some 20 years ago 
were the only innovations for increasing on-farm productivity. Farmer-led rehabilitation could not match the speed of spread of the virulent cocoa swollen shoot virus disease. This led to the spread of the disease to all the cocoa growing regions, especially the Western North region. To tackle this and reverse the declining trends in years, the compensation based cocoa rehabilitation program was adopted across the cocoa landscape. Cocoa farmers and their landowners were compensated for the loss of livelihoods as a result of the rehabilitation program. Cocoa Board continues to undertake the rehabilitation of disease farms free of charge through the program. The, pro the program entails a one-off payment of compensation to both the landowner and the tenant farmer and involves cutting, treatment, and replanting of the affected farm and the maintenance of the farm for a period of two years before it is handed over to the farmer. In addition to the payment of compensation of 1,000 CDs per hectare, paid separately to both landowner and tenant, Cocoa Board bears the entire cost of the cutting, treating, replanting, and maintenance for two years before it is handed over to the farmer. Compensation paid to both landlords and farmers stands at 112 million 686,040 CDs as of September 2022. Government has also introduced productivity enhancement programs, which include artificial pollination, in irrigation, mass pruning on farms, as well as timely and efficient access to fertilizer and the control of diseases and pests, which have helped increase productivity. To ensure that farmers receive the full value for the produce they offer for sale, government has introduced a uniform, non-adjustable electronic weighing mechanism for the purchase of cocoa. Cocoa buyers cannot adjust the weighing scale after it has been calibrated and sealed by the Ghana Standard Authority. In all, some 40,000 uniform, non-adjustable electronic weighing scales have been distributed to farmers. Cocoa Board has also rolled out a contributory scheme under the new three-tier pension scheme for cocoa farmers. Enrollment has started and will continue and will thus make way for contributions from farmers and Cocoa Board in the coming season. Cocoa Board is expected to contribute some 74.5 million seeds to the farm this year. The scheme will enable Cocoa farmers also to save towards their retirement so as to guarantee income security improve living standards in their old age, and motivate the youth to venture into cocoa farming. This is the first successful attempt to give effect to Section 26, Clause 1 of the Ghana Cocoa Board Act, 1984 PNDCL 84, which provides for the setting up of the scheme. This has been made possible because of the implementation of the COCO managing system, which has provided the needed data and digital foundation for the scheme to be successful. Nanano, ladies and gentlemen, one of the first decisions that I took as President of the Republic was to sign a strategic partnership agreement with the great President of the, the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, his Excellency Alassane Ouattara, which united the cocoa sectors of the two nations and helped us tackle common challenges in the industry. The individual country-centered solutions are not sufficient to tackle the global challenges facing the cocoa economy. This cooperation has already yielded good results for the industry 
has been able to adopt and implement the Living Income Differential, LID. The LID is an additional amount of 400 United States dollars per ton on the price of cocoa paid on every ton of cocoa purchased from Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. The LID is paid fully to the farmers as a cushion to adverse effects of low international prices of cocoa. The LID has increased the average on farmer's income by 700 United States dollars per ton. It is the first successful attempt by producer countries to influence incomes of cocoa farmers through an international pricing mechanism. Government has also rolled out a digitization program to digitize all operations of the sector, enhance traceability, and efficient management of the domestic supply chain through a integrated digital database that captures farm and farmer information, including the physical conditions of farms and farmer household characteristics. Pension scheme to provide the farmers income certainty even in their old age. The pension is starting this year. And I'm happy to announce that one, some 100,000 farmers have been registered in the Ashanti and Western region. I'm confident that the measures taken by the management of Cocoa Board and trustees of the scheme will entail the successful implementation of the scheme in collaboration with the National Pensions Regulatory Authority. I'm happy to state that under our industrialization drive, the value addition in the cocoa industry has increased significantly. From 30% of annual output in 2016 to 48% in 2022. The target of processing 50% of the production locally is within immediate reach. The promotion of domestic consumption is also beginning to yield results. Domestic enterprises have emerged strongly under the 1D1F initiative for the processing and manufacturing of various cocoa-based products across the districts. Cocoa Board has taken a giant step to support small-scale and artisanal chocolate manufacturing with business-friendly guidelines that provide access to premium Ghanaian beans, even at the district level. Madam, ladies and gentlemen, until recently, international prices of cocoa have remained relatively low and made worse by COVID-19. In spite of this, Cocoa Board and government have been taking the very hard decision of increasing producer price of cocoa. Cocoa prices have increased from 7,600 CDs per ton in 2016 to 12,800 CDs per ton in 2022, a significant increase of 68%. This has had an adverse impact on Cocoa Board's financial performance. However, the sustainability of the entire industry hinges on a well-remunerated producer who's willing to invest in business only with the certainty that government will pay the appropriate price. The international market is beginning to pick up and government, in keeping with our promise to our gallant cocoa farmers, has today increased cocoa prices from 12,800 CDs per ton to 20,943 CDs per ton. Or 1,308 CDs per bag. Pension scheme to provide the farmers income certainty even in their old age. The pension is starting this year. And I'm happy to announce that one, some 100,000 farmers 
have been registered in the Ashanti and Western region. I'm confident that the measures taken by the management of Coco Ball and trustees of the scheme will entail the successful implementation of the scheme in collaboration with the National Pensions Regulatory Authority. I'm happy to state that under our industrialization drive, the value addition in the cocoa industry has increased significantly. From 30% of annual output in 2016 to 48% in 2022. The target of processing 50% of the production locally is within immediate reach. The promotion of domestic consumption is also beginning to yield results. Domestic enterprises have emerged strongly under the 1D1F initiative for the processing and manufacturing of various cocoa-based products across the districts. Cocoa Board has taken a giant step to support small-scale and artisanal chocolate manufacturing with business-friendly guidelines that provide access to premium Ghanaian beans, even at the district level. Madam, ladies and gentlemen, until recently, international prices of cocoa have remained relatively low and made worse by COVID-19. In spite of this, Cocoa Board and government have been taking the very hard decision of increasing producer price of cocoa. Cocoa prices have increased from 7,600 CDs per ton in 2016 to 12,800 CDs per ton in 2022, a significant increase of 68%. This has had an adverse impact on Cocoa Board's financial performance. However, the sustainability of the entire industry hinges on a well-remunerated producer who's willing to invest in business only with the certainty that government will pay the appropriate price. The international market is beginning to pick up and government, in keeping with our promise to our gallant cocoa farmers, has today increased cocoa prices from 12,800 CDs per ton to 20,943 CDs per ton. Or 1,308 CDs per bag.
Edema Ghana Uko a crafo a das from corn say and then da mea mekai abaka se mwa and then da a di kaya a ye be a koko a ye mieno october ye bieno september a ye a dia strong kukra na se koko a kwafwa shen and swan O man pay ni ba ye no bibia o no be she bia no o de ade foforo de ba ene o be che asem papa o be che asem so a e de che bia o no be she bia no o de nsem pa ene de bra mo punin na ye fa nya djuma o man pay ni ba ye se se a no when you be a Wahabia, no be a Timbian, you say, Why you punia? In shame, you know, Emma, Cocoon, and so. Ham pollination, a man paying Gan and Quane or Maya, yet my ham pollination, Emma Coco, a Diabapo, as over two thousand pots, a big name, we are see baby, we are just a Gana. We're not sure. Ishe fufra wodi aba Sabi ya mekansen kane ye nimse koko ekwa fo no bebre na no koko Emse eye nko fo nwanwa moko bompia so a ewo ho western region bompia so mejiri se bompia so fo a e dua ba ko more than 2000 pots a diaba for more than thousand eight hundred pots. A B N C O V A C B B A just a Ghana. And you know, and she say ya, Oman Peni, Ada Roma, Yadi Abramono, Nina and Shepa, Sisia Yakase, European Union for Embra or Marshano, Yaboy and Wessie, Oman Peni Ada Roma, Yaboy and Wessie, European Union, she said. First of January 2025, what the Coco Air Europe, the Manibia, Nasa won't me one trash and so the other name is Coco. No, if you have four women ever, oh, yeah, our Europe. Nanso, I'm a Pena da Roma, and a Coco management system, Tino, Ghana, Yabwe, Mwesi. Ghana Kwane or Mania or National Traceability System. It be me, we are baby BBR. Yenim, Oman Penin, and a day Coco Pension or the Baye. Nia Shem Rano, nineteen eighty four, no Shem Rano. And so I near Juma and Rana Chesse and Chesha, nineteen eighty four, we are nineteen eighty five. A set pension and basso. A masua for him said, or man penin and not down for Kufuado or buy and son of the national pension or the Eba. Just a bit PIS from Kumbia or Kukwe Mumbiano or man penin and a diaba. And then Nancy Akoba said, Ye be Koko, a September, not October, and I'm a man penin so and a Eba. Ain't you know? Ghana Kukwe Kwa Fuenye na Miami Jirama Nem Boda Nem Egina Ghana Kukwe Kwa Fuenye na Nem Yeda Omampenye Yedwa Sifi Koswa Nasuye Musa Na Asemde Bani Diye Me Meye John Osiboni Me Prapa Kwem Ne Mumono Eye Yesu Na Ankasa Odi Asemde Beba Ne Ne Umbe Chia Asemde Beda Mwa Sinya Mishle Ubiya address this important gathering. Indeed, today is a great day for our gallant farmers and every citizen of this country. It is a momentous moment for me because I stand before those who paid my school fees throughout my stay at Presec Legon through the Coco Scholarship. Nananum, let me first talk about some issues on cocoa. 
Cocoa is an extremely important aspect of our country's economy. The country's leading export commodity, the importance of the, of the development of this country transcends beyond the regions to supporting developmental projects. From the provision of electricity to the improvement in our roads infrastructure across the country. Mr. President and our Chairman, the stability of our, country, our currency through the annual syndicated loan facility, the contribution of our cocoa to the national economy has been invaluable. In appreciation of this immense contribution, we are mindful of the group of people whose toils and sweats have for several decades sustained the sector in which are our hard-working cocoa farmers. Ghana continues to pride herself as a global leader in cocoa production and the world's best producer of quality cocoa beans because of the resolve and determination of our farmers to succeed even in the midst of daunting challenges and strained environmental conditions which we have little control over. Nana Chairman, while celebrating the successes of the cocoa sector, through the implementation of pragmatic policies, we need to remind ourselves about the numerous challenges confronting the industry. In the course of the year, Nana Chairman, there have been several reports of smuggling of cocoa from Ghana to our neighboring countries, and this has contributed, contributed adversely to the country's production capacity. The sad part of this unfortunate situation is that the individuals who are engaged in this nefarious act of smuggling are neither the farmers nor cocoa ball who have contributed to the production of the cocoa, but rather private merchants who regrettably contribute absolutely nothing to the country's production capacity. Mr. President and our Chairman, I only have one assurance to give to the nation. I will not disappoint Ghanaians in our quest to stop smuggling. I will not disappoint Ghanaians. Where I am from, we will say, Afi Kuku smuggling. <laughs> Mr. President, if you accept the price recommendation that I have submitted to you, not only will it show your commitment to the values expressed in your directive to me via your letter in April, but it will also show a deeper commitment to cocoa farmers in the history of this country. Mr. President, you have, intimidate, you have intimated, intimated time and again that, the, that most of the buildings built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s in Kumase, Ahafo, and Tepa, and throughout Ashanti region were built by cocoa farmers. You have also expressed your wish to see more cocoa farmers in the middle and upper class of our society. Mr. President, we have recommended a price that sets the tone for that to commence. Mr. President, I judge with a high level of certainty that this announcement will be historic. Indeed, I have seen the speculators' price on social media, and even the critics are calling it historic. Mr. President, I see beyond the historic tagline Cocoa farmers gathered and scattered across the country will agree with me that history is not accepted at the cashier's office when school reopens. Cash is what is accepted, and cash is what you will, you will put in the pocket of cocoa farmers. Sikabe by Yebotum. Mr. President, this big announcement is part of the cocoa ball turnaround you ordered. And I assure the nation that now Cocoa Board has recovered and will deliver the mandate to cocoa farmers and surely make Ghana proud. Let me conclude by thanking the board 
led by Peter McMenu and management, led by Joseph Boahin Edu and his deputies, for all the support given me in my five months in office. Clearly, they are with the drafting of the turnaround strategy as directed by the president, and the effect that we are seeing today gives great promise to cocoa farmers and the cocoa industry. Let me express my profound gratitude to our dear farmers for their hard work, dedication, and reassure them of government's continued support as we enter the next season. Mr. President, let me use this platform to thank you, especially the cocoa farmers, and to thank all cocoa farmers for sponsoring my education as a child of a single parent and many like me. Thank you, Yadamasi, and God bless you. Address this important gathering. Indeed, today is a great day for our gallant farmers and every citizen of this country. It is a momentous moment for me because I stand before those who paid my school fees throughout my stay at Presec Legon through the Coco Scholarship. Nananum, let me first talk about some issues on cocoa. Cocoa is an extremely important aspect of our country's economy. The country's leading export commodity, the importance of the, of the development of this country transcends beyond the regions to supporting developmental projects. From the provision of electricity to the improvement in our roads infrastructure across the country. Mr. President and our Chairman, the stability of our, country, our currency through the annual syndicated loan facility, the contribution of our cocoa to our national economy has been invaluable. In appreciation of this immense contribution, we are mindful of the group of people whose toils and sweats have for several decades sustained the sector, and which are our hard-working cocoa farmers. Ghana continues to pride herself as a global leader in cocoa production and the world's best producer of quality cocoa beans because of the resolve and determination of our farmers to succeed even in the midst of daunting challenges and strained environmental conditions which we have little control over. Nana Chairman, while celebrating the successes of the cocoa sector, through the implementation of pragmatic policies, we need to remind ourselves about the numerous challenges confronting the industry. In the course of the year, Nana Chairman, there have been several reports of smuggling of cocoa from Ghana to our neighboring countries, and this has contributed, contributed adversely to the country's production capacity. The sad part of this unfortunate situation is that the individuals who are engaged in this nefarious act of smuggling are neither the farmers nor cocoa ball who have contributed to the production of the cocoa, but rather private merchants who regrettably contribute absolutely nothing to the country's production capacity. Mr. President and our Chairman, I only have one assurance to give to the nation. I will not disappoint Ghanaians in our quest to stop smuggling. I will not disappoint Ghanaians. Where I am from, we will say, Afi Kuku smuggling. <laughs> Mr. President, if you accept the price recommendation that I have submitted to you, not only will it show your commitment to the values expressed in your directive to me via your letter in April, but it will also show a deeper commitment to cocoa farmers in the history of this country. Mr. President, you have intimated, you have intimated, intimated time and again that, the, that most of the buildings built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s 
in Kumasi, Ahafo, and Tepa, and throughout Ashanti region, were built by Kuku farmers. You have also expressed your wish to see more Koko farmers in the middle and upper class of our society. Mr. President, we have recommended a price that sets the tone for that to commence. Mr. President, I judge with a high level of certainty that this announcement will be historic. Indeed, I have seen the speculators' price on social media, and even the critics are calling it historic. Mr. President, I see beyond the historic tagline, cocoa farmers gathered and scattered across the country will agree with me that history is not accepted at the cashier's office when school reopens. Cash is what is accepted, and cash is what you will, you will put in the pocket of cocoa farmers. Sikabe Mr. President, this big announcement is part of the cocoa ball turnaround you ordered and i assure the nation that now cocoa board has recovered and will deliver the mandate to cocoa farmers and surely make ghana proud let me conclude by thanking the board led by peter mcmenu and management led by joseph Boahin edu and his deputies for all the support given me in my five months in office. Clearly, they are with the drafting of the turnaround strategy as directed by the president, and the effect that we are seeing today gives great promise to cocoa farmers and the cocoa industry. Let me express my profound gratitude to our dear farmers for their hard work, dedication, and reassure them of government's continued support as we enter the next season. Mr. President, let me use this platform to thank you, especially the cocoa farmers, and to thank all cocoa farmers for sponsoring my education as a child of a single parent, and many like me. Thank you, Yedamase, and God bless you. to join you today to mark this special occasion. I wish, first and foremost, to extend my warm and profound facilitations from His Royal Majesty of Two Forces to the Second, the Overlord of the Ashanti Kingdom. I also wish to welcome you all to this auspicious gathering of revered chiefs, esteemed cocoa farmers, and all those who have joined us to partake in this momentous event which I have personally team giving our farmers a decent income, the MPP way. The same way, ladies and gentlemen, while thanking His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, and the organizers for the choice of the Ashanti region, and especially TEPA, for the announcement of the 2023-2024 season's Cocoa Producer Prize, I wish to say that the decision resonates deeply with our shared aspirations and emphasizes the commitment of the government of His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufuado towards empowering our farmers to thrive, invest in sustainable prices, and enhance their quality of life. It is also an acknowledgement that we value the prosperity of our farmers and their critical role in sustaining cocoa production in the region and by extension the whole country. 
Kokon, which is widely grown in the region, holds a special place in our hearts, history, and heritage. And Mr. President, I wish to inform you that I'm also a cocoa farmer. With my cocoa farm at Bani in the Ahafuano West District Assembly, which is not too far away from here. Probably for generations, the sweat and toil of our farmers have nurtured Ghana's premium cocoa, and their labor has been shared globally, bringing recognition and economic sustenance to our region. Today, almost every chocolate confectionery across the globe uses Ghana's cocoa, and this is a pride we cannot underestimate. Today, as we convene to hear the announcement of the cocoa price, for the upcoming season, we recognize the importance of fair, just, and remunerative income for all illustrious farmers. Your Excellency, under your distinguished leadership, we can always be rest assured that our cocoa farmers will receive the compensation they deserve for their dedication and unwavering commitment to this industry. Undoubtedly, our nation's prosperity is intertwined with the prosperity of our farmers and thus must manifest in our efforts to provide them with the necessary support, resources, infrastructure to strengthen their operations in the value chain. As the cocoa price is being announced today, which I believe will be good for our ears and our well-being, I have this special message for our cocoa farmers. Let the new price reflect the value we place on your labor and critical role you play in our nation's trajectory of growth and resist any enticement in whatsoever form it may take to lure you to cede your farmlands to illegal miners. Environment that empowers you to support your cocoa business and to improve your quality of life. Additionally, I plead with all cocoa farmers to stay away from smuggling of cocoa to our neighboring countries. It affects the country negatively. I therefore encourage you all to make some time to interact and engage in productive conversations with your colleagues, share ideas, and collaborate towards the progress of our cocoa industry. On this note, Your Excellency, all distinguished invited guests, I once again extend my heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you for coming to the Ashanti region and specifically to Ashanti, to Tepa. You are indeed welcome to the region. Thank you for your kind attention and may the almighty God bless us all. Thanks. Thank you very much. You are pleased to join you today to mark this special occasion. I wish, first and foremost, to extend my warm and profound facilitations from His Royal Majesty of Two Forces to the Second, the Overlord of the Ashanti Kingdom. I also wish to welcome you all to this auspicious gathering of river chiefs, esteemed cocoa farmers, and all those who have joined us to partake in this momentous event, which I have personally team giving our farmers a decent income the MPP way. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, while thanking His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, and the organizers for the choice of the Ashanti region, and especially TEPA, for the announcement of the 2023-2024 season's Cocoa Producer Prize, I wish to say that the decision resonates deeply with our shared aspirations and emphasizes the commitment of the government of His Excellency Nanado Dankwe Kufuado towards empowering our farmers to thrive, invest in sustainable prices, and enhance their quality of life. It is also an acknowledgement that we value the prosperity of our farmers and their critical role in sustaining cocoa production in the region and by extension the whole country. Cocoa, which is widely grown in the region, holds a special place in our hearts, history, and heritage. And Mr. President, I wish to inform you that I'm also a cocoa farmer. 
with my cuckoo farm at Bani Kuhn in the Ahafuano West District Assembly, which is not too far away from here. Probably for generations, the sweat and toil of our farmers have nurtured Ghana's premium cocoa, and their labor has been shared globally, bringing recognition and economic sustenance to our region. Today, almost every chocolate confectionery across the globe uses Ghana's cocoa, and this is a pride we cannot underestimate. Today, as we convene to hear the announcement of the cocoa price, for the upcoming season, we recognize the importance of fair, just, and remunerative income for all illustrious farmers. Your Excellency, under your distinguished leadership, we can always be rest assured that our cocoa farmers will receive the compensation they deserve for their dedication and unwavering commitment to this industry. Undoubtedly, our nation's prosperity is intertwined with the prosperity of our farmers and thus must manifest in our efforts to provide them with the necessary support, resources, infrastructure to strengthen their operations in the value chain. As the cocoa price is being announced today, which I believe will be good for our ears and our well-being, I have this special message for our cocoa farmers. Let the new price reflect the value we place on your labor and critical role you play in our nation's trajectory of growth and resist any enticement in whatsoever form it may take to lure you to cede your farmlands to illegal miners. Environment that